We got our new handbook this morning at 8.30, and we knew there were some changes happening. Uh, College-wide, there's been a problem with attendance in lab and clinical, <coughs> and so we got it at 8.30, and we're implementing it effective this semester. So I know Dr. Aiki mentioned some of it, but I need to review it with you to make sure that you're aware. Uh, it's pretty simple. Basically, lab is mandatory. It always has been. If you miss 10 minutes or more of lab, whether you come in late or you leave early, you will make it up. Um, and basically, three strikes, you're out. It's kind of the policy. So lab and clinical will count together. So we're keeping lab attendance. If you miss one day of lab, you miss a day of clinical, you miss a third day, <coughs> guess what? You're out. You're out of the nursing program, OK? So um, I wanted to review that with everybody. And um, let's see. Just like before, the part that hasn't changed is that the first time you're absent, absent, you have the opportunity to do a makeup. And if you didn't do the makeup for clinical, you lost 1% of your final grade, OK? Um, the thing that is new is that it's not optional for lab. If you miss more than 10 minutes of lab, you will have a makeup assignment to do. And um, if you don't do it, you will, you have to do it in order to be successful in the skill, number one. And if you don't do it, uh, you'll get a 1% dock in your final grade. The second absence, whether it's lab or clinical, what happens? 2%. 2% reduction in grade on top of the 1% you already lost for the first absence. Okay, so it'd be a 3% reduction in your final grade. All right. And then the third absence from lab or clinical, you're out. Okay? So we're tracking attendance. Um, attendance is just, it's important. We report attendance to the Board of Nursing and say, we have this many hours of lab clinical hours. That's how our programs are approved. And um, that's how we maintain our accreditation, is to make sure that you are here for your lab and clinical activities. Okay? Any questions about that? The other thing that's new is no show, no call policy. Um, we've had problems in all of the nursing programs <coughs> with students either leaving clinical without letting anybody know, leaving the floor, abandoning the patient, crazy stuff, and um, not letting the instructor know. So if that happens, no call, no show, either you're sick or you're late or you don't show up, um, that's an automatic variance. Um, the other thing that changed are the variances. You guys, how many variances can you get before you're out? It's two per level, <coughs> so if you had one in 170, if you get one in 180 and 181, you're out, okay? And you're allowed to have four variances in the nursing program. So basically, it's two per level, two in the 100 levels, two in the 400 levels, and after the fourth one, you're out, okay? Um, we've had some really um, <coughs> big problems with nursing student behavior, <coughs> and uh, at Christmas time, you know, uh, nursing is the most respected and has the profession with the most integrity. So we have to maintain that integrity. We want to keep that there. And um, we just had to review that with you guys. Okay? Any questions about the changes in the new policy? Did, did Dr. Aiki already talk to you about that? Okay. Um, so makeup, no call, no show, and um, reduction. All right, I think I covered everything. And I posted that announcement. You maybe got it twice. I'm hoping you got it twice. Um, I sent it through the organization, which you all should have access to. So if you need to refer back to your 170 skills, all that stuff is there. And um, also, I, that's where the open lab hours are posted. So I don't know if anybody's had a chance to check your email, but did you get two announcements from me this morning? Mm -hmm. OK, good. So that means you're a member of the organization. And then I also sent out an announcement from the class about um, bringing your paperwork. Because I wasn't sure if Dr. Aiki had told you to print your stuff out or not. So we want to make sure we have that covered. OK. Um, so what we're going to do, this is the skill, uh, skill evaluation. And now that you guys have fundamentals under your belt, we're, we, we're starting to look for clinical judgment, clinical reasoning. You know, we can teach you rote skills, you know, just like putting your seatbelt on. Right. Um, but we need you to start thinking about what you're doing, okay? So we have a checklist here, or a skill evaluation. You know, if you're very concrete and need black and white stuff, but we want you to be practicing nurses and be thinking, is there a better way to do this? Can I do this better? 
Is there a safer way to do this? Can I improve the quality of care of my patients by doing this better? Okay. So we're trying to get away from the black and the white. We want you to start using your gray matter. Okay. And, and we're looking for uh, nursing judgment and clinical reasoning. Okay. So um, yes, we do still have a checklist, and I want to go through it. Um, your skill evaluation is in two weeks, I think, for um, IV. And uh, I think that same day we're going to learn the second skill, which is IV push. All right. So we're just going to reinforce today what you started with medication administration last uh, semester. How many of you gave a real medication last semester? Anybody not give a medication last semester? Good. So you all know how to give medication safely. Okay, good. Um, we're going to review that because it's a little different. When we do this last skill, we're going to use real medications. All right. So um, this time you're going to have to know your <coughs> medications when you come to the lab. And that's why um, we posted that list of common IV piggyback medications. And then in two weeks you're going to learn about the IV push medication. So we find that students uh, need help learning how to use their drug book, how to use their resources to give medication safely. So we're going to go through some of that. A lot of this, though, um, is practice on your own time in the lab. Okay. So I'm going to go through the skill today. Um, and the open lab hours are posted, so you can practice over the next two weeks as much as you want. And um, we'll evaluate your skill just like we did in 170. Um, you're going to have the opportunity to perform that skill in front of the instructors. And um, if you fail the skill, you'll have an opportunity to practice, really learn it well, and do it a second time. If you don't pass the IV skill uh, the second time, um, you'll fail this class, just like 170. So um, we want to make sure that you guys are ready for that, all right? Um, IV is a different skill. You're putting medications directly into a patient's vein. So this is basically no nonsense, all right? I take nursing very seriously. Um, we need to start improving our health care that we provide our patients, okay? Um, all of us are very seasoned nurses. We've seen lots of patients have adverse reactions. It's very common to have an adverse reaction from medication to I bet all of us have probably seen at least page five patients die from IV medications. Okay? So um, that's why we take it serious. All right. All right. So let's go through. Um, let me see here. So everybody has the list of medications. It's about 15, 20. You probably, I know Mrs. Shirey gave you a huge extensive list last semester. And we're going to build on those medications as you move along. All right. So um, you probably, any of those medications you recognize you guys have already given? <coughs> Anybody given potassium yet? Potassium? Okay, good. So you probably already know about potassium. And this time you're giving it through an IV. So it has a completely different set of nursing interventions that you need to know to give potassium IV. Okay. Um, <coughs> what else? Uh, we also gave you the medication prep sheet. And um, you again saw that in 170. It looks very much like this. These are the kinds of things that we're going to expect you to know about your medications when you give your medication. So, yes. common medications that you'll be given in clinical um, this semester, okay? For check-off, hold on, let me, I have to review it because it's been a while since I looked at this. Um, no, because uh, they're ones we're doing today. So, let me see here. That's correct. I had to look at it because I hadn't looked at it yet. Yes, there's 12 medications here. We have about five set up for practice and five are for checkoff. And uh, during checkoff, 
you may have any of these 12 medications. Now, you don't have to memorize it. You don't have to know all this in your head. We will allow you to bring in whatever you use to give medication safely in clinical. So it's just, we're setting it up just like clinical. Ms. Shirey comes to you, we're given aspirin. Tell me what you know about aspirin. What kind of drug is it? What do you need to teach your patient about it? Now we're gonna give it to them, you know, where, where we put it, does it have to be coated, can we crush it, all that stuff. So you can have, I use drug cards. Um, I haven't got that part yet. Uh, I use drug cards and I have all my important information and um, you can use your drug book. Everything you need to know for these skills is in the Davis drug book, okay? Or if you have it on your um, uh, electronic access, okay? So, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, um, so this is the list of medications. You, uh, from here on out, are required to know these medications in case they come up in clinical or um, for checkoff, for practice and checkoff, okay? Um, let's see. And this is where we're getting into that nursing judgment <coughs> clinical piece part. Yes, your CNA might have gotten vital signs, but do you need to check vital signs before you give these medications? So that's the kind, not all of them. If I'm giving Rocephin, I'm probably not gonna check vital signs. But if I'm giving um, maybe potassium or magnesium, I might need to check vital signs. So this is why you need to go through your drugs, start to get more familiar with your drugs so that you know what you need to do before you give this medication to your patient. And we're gonna talk more about that. And you will be responsible for these drugs in the next, because I talked to um, the 201 instructor, and she says, oh, we gave Ketorolac, which is on your next list. I was like, oh, good, did the students know it? Because they had to know it for 180, all right? So, you know, that's where you guys need to start absorbing and, and saving your um, information from class to class. Um, let's see, what else? So I guess we'll just talk about the actual skill now. Um, I passed out the skill assessment record and it's gonna stay in the lab in this binder. Yours is red, because now we're up to five binders. We've got five classes learning skills, okay? So your, your binder is red. It looks like this. And I need you to fill it out just like you did before. Your last name first. Um, we're gonna do two skills. Today we're gonna do IV maintenance, priming, and flushing. And we're gonna evaluate you in two weeks. And then the second skill we're gonna do is IV push. That's where you're attaching the syringe to the IV tubing and you're pushing a drug directly into the patient's vein. That's gonna be the second skill that you're gonna learn in two weeks, okay? And then I want you to put your name um, here that you are aware of the uh, mandatory lab and clinical, now lab and or clinical attendance and requirements for makeup. And that you need to notify an instructor if you're gonna be um, absent or late or have to leave early, okay? Um, and preferably that's within two hours for the lab because um, it's very difficult for us to get 33 of you through a day of checkoff. And so if you're gonna be absent, we might be able to move somebody up so we're not checking somebody off at 4.30, okay? So that's why we require two hours notice so we can prepare adequately to get you guys all through that skill. Um, and of course, it's just part of civic professionalism, which is the other thing we're evaluating you on, which is on the back page. Um, just like, you know, if you're working at McDonald's or Walmart, if you don't show up for work, they're gonna fire you. And same thing for uh, being a professional nurse, okay? So we're, we're trying to work on all those objectives. So if you can sign that for me, and then on the top of the second page, I need you to write your name again on the back page. And they're gonna be stored in this book. In, in lab 319. Now I also want you to know, like I said, we have five binders, so that means there's five classes doing skills. We're kind of running out of space. So um, don't wait till Wednesday before checkoff to uh, I have that.
please, for all 33 of you to practice on Wednesday before checkoff. Okay? Where do we actually sign at? Uh, on the bottom, the paragraph on the bottom of the first page, right there. I, I, whatever your name is. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through the skill evaluation checklist. You can either listen to me. It's all right here. What you need to know. Um, however, you know everybody learns skills differently. So we're trying to give you. Um, Audiovisual opportunities to learn the skills, written opportunities, whatever uh, you need. Okay. <coughs> um, the other date that I need you to ask to put on your SAR, uh, the Ivy Push Lab, just like before, if you fail the skill the first time, uh, you have five days to um, do the remediation, and that might be coming in after clinical. Okay, whatever it takes to get it done. Uh, and all skills for this class have to be done by February the 19th, so you want to write that date in. February the 19th, 2015, at 4 p.m. Okay, to meet lab objectives for this class. Again, for this lab, we reuse supplies. Save all your caps and all your things that you pull off of your IV bags and your tubings, because you're going to reuse your bags and reuse your tubings and things like that. Okay? So don't throw anything away. And when it comes to checkoff, you need to have one opened, one unopened big bag of saline, a small bag of saline, and your two tubings, which we'll talk about today. So four things. Um, your big bag, your little bag of saline, and your two tubings, and we'll talk about those. All right, so I'm going to start at the top um, with the intravenous skills evaluation. So, um, you know, in the real world, we're trying to make this real. That's my motto, keeping it real, okay? So, you know, you're going to go in and meet your patient first and see your patient, and you're going to assess your patient's IV before you ever get started with IV medication. Right, because it would be a waste of medication, a waste of time to get it all ready and the patient's IV is infiltrated. Okay? We're not learning how to start IVs in this class. So this skill, we're going to reinforce assessment of the IV. You got a little bit of that last semester in the lab. Okay? We're going to flush the saline lock with um, saline and assess the IV again. And we're going to hang our primary medication and we're going to hang our secondary medication. So before we give our medications, we want to go in, we're going to meet our patient. I don't have it. Uh, today my patient is Susie Bonebreaker. So um, just like every other skill, we start with our wipe. And I'm also being a little bit more explicit because we have um, new adjuncts here, your, uh, the instructors that are taking you guys to clinical. So they may or may not know the lab procedure, so I'm kind of going back to basics to catch them up to speed, okay? But this is just a reminder for you guys. So what does wipes mean? What's our acronym for wipes mean? Right. So before I go into my patient's room, I'm going to wash my hands <coughs> or state it. Right. I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, Ms. Bonebreaker, uh, my name is uh, Ms. Wheeler. I'm going to be giving you your medications today. Just want to make sure your IV looks okay. And this has direct access to their IV, so they potentially could have direct access to body fluids. So I'm going to wear my gloves before I assess my IV. Right. Because patients ooze and seep and, and I already see blood there. So I'm going to put my gloves on, and you guys all still have your non-sterile gloves. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that your IV was okay. I'm going to go prepare your medications. Uh, does it hurt? And you know, nurses like to prod and poke, and I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see. So the first thing I notice is that I see blood in my tubing. So that's actually a good sign. That means it's in the vein. Okay, I'm looking at my dressing. Uh, this is basically a two by two dressing. It's a clear occlusive dressing. And I want to make sure that it's dry and intact. There's no uh, blood or fluid oozing around it, that my catheter is secure. And this contraption here, I'm going to pass them around, it's called a saline lock. 
So I'm going to make sure that my lock is truly locked. And I'm going to pass that around. This is this blue clamp. To lock it and unlock it, you just slide it. It's called a slide clamp. So that's unlocked. And this is locked. Um, so I've made sure that my catheter is, is patent and intact. I'm not really quite sure it's patent yet because I haven't pushed anything in. But my catheter is intact, my tubing is secured, and my dressing is dry and intact. I also noticed that the date is here, 115 at 0800, a number 22. So this is a blue catheter. So I've assessed what size it is. The blue ones are 22, and you'll learn these as you get through clinical, what size they are. And this is actually in my patient's right arm, okay? So it's a 22 in his left forearm. I'm going to put it back. It's right. Did I say left? Yeah, oh, yeah. sorry. Thank you. They know that my brain goes faster than my mouth. Uh, so this is a 22 in my right forearm. And this is basically just a saline lock. The doctor ordered a saline lock, and that's all this patient has. All right? Now, when I get my MAR, I'm going to find out that the doctor's ordered something else. And I'm going to pass some of these around. So I'm going to tell Mrs. Bonebreaker, um, I, I washed my hands, I identified my patient. Um, if I'm going to do, let's say I have to do the IV on the chest, I would provide privacy. But for the most part, the arm is, it's okay to uncover the arm and show the arm. Okay? I'm going to explain the procedure to the patient, which I already did, right? And I'm going to provide safety at all times. So again, I can't leave my bed up, I can't leave my side rails down, um, and I'm going to make sure that my bed is locked and that my patient has a call bell. So we're going to maintain safety at all times, just like we did for all of our other skills. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go prepare my medication and get my medications ready. I can come over here. Um, now I want to pass around what a saline lock and what I'm talking about is, real quick. All right. Uh, this is the IV catheter. There are just. Uh, has anybody taken the? Did you see any IVs in clinical last semester? Some of you did? Good. Anybody get to take an IV out? Okay, good. So this is just a flexible um, IV catheter. It's tapered at the end, so you always want to inspect it. If you're taking a catheter out, you want to inspect it and make sure you've got that tapered end. Because there's a needle that goes through here. Sorry. Yeah, just give me one. Um, there's a needle that goes through here, and sometimes it's sheared off, and the catheter yeah. will travel throughout the patient's body, and I'll show you that in a second. So this is just the plain IV catheter. It's blue, very flexible. That's why the patient can move their arm, and the catheter can not too much though. All right. Um, and this piece is called extension tubing, or ba basically the saline lock. Okay. Um, and these have fluid in them, but it's not real blood, so don't worry about that. So I'm going to pass these around so that you can, you know, practice locking it and unlocking it. Because um, imagine these are tasty tasty skin and you uh, don't want to pull the catheter out uh, trying to figure out how to do the side clamp. So this is an IV catheter. It has a protective cap. When it's inserted into the patient, I don't know if it's going to let me do this. There's actually a needle that extends through the end of the catheter that goes into the skin, into the vein. Okay? When I push this button, the needle disappears. I'm going to try to take it out. I don't know if it disappears. There's my needle. So this is the IV catheter. In the real world, once we get the catheter in the vein, we'll push that button, the needle will attract in here, we'll throw this piece away. But I wanted to show you, see the um, needle extends on the end of the plastic catheter. I'm going to pull it out slowly, okay, this part gets thrown away and this part stays in the patient. And we, we, I'll show you how we really do it. You see, sometimes nurses will slide this in and out and that's how the catheter gets sheared off. You're never ever supposed to do that, so don't look at that part. In the real world, we just push the button. 
blood drips out. We connect our extension tubing, okay, and this is left in the patient. Okay? Can you uh, pass this one back to me? You're wiping your eyes. Okay. So that's the IV catheter. That's what we're assessing for. All right. So the first page is basically the general medication administration guidelines that you saw before. But we're ramping it up a little bit. Um, we're talking about true medications, and you're going to talk to us about the medications you're giving the patient. Um, we always try to give the medication within a time limit. Um, we're trying to do this skill. We try to make all of our skills timed so that you're giving the medication safely. Uh, you'll have 20 minutes to give the medication. We're not convinced that's the best amount of time yet, so we're saying about 20. But don't freak out if it takes you 22 or 25. It's okay. We're trying to get it done in 20 minutes for a skill check -off. Because just like when you guys go to your clinical facilities, you know, you can't give the, the medication was due at 10, you can't give it at 11.10, right? Okay. Um, so you're going to need to know the drug information, action indications, safe dose, time of onset, peak of action, common side effects, contraindications, drug interactions, and nursing implications. And basically that's everything on the sheet. And we want you to know this stuff for specific reasons, so I'm going to go over it real quick. All right. Of course you would need to know why you're giving the patient the drug, because you're going to tell the patient, you're not going to tell them I'm giving you your rocephin, you're going to tell the patient you're giving them their antibiotic. Okay? The patient might be allergic to antibiotics. Oh, I'm allergic to antibiotics. That doesn't mean you don't give it. If you know the pharma, that's the therapeutic class, antibiotics. If you know the pharmacological class, anybody know what rocephin is? Cephalosporin, very good. Okay? My patient might be allergic to, to penicillin, might be allergic to sulfa, things like that. Can I give the patient an antibiotic if they're allergic to sulfa? Can I give them a cephalosporin? I can, because you looked your drug up and you see that. Can I give the patient a cephalosporin if they're allergic to penicillin? Maybe not. And your drug book will explain that to you, what that means, okay? Some patients, that's why, you know, patients have allergies and we need to make sure that we're giving them um, the pharmacological class that they are not allergic to, okay? Um, indications. Well, why am I getting an antibiotic? Uh, I passed around the MAR. We're going to be using Susie Bonebreaker. Everybody has a Susie Bonebreaker's M MAR? So why would Susie be getting an antibiotic? What's it indicated for? Yeah. Pneumonia. This is to help you with your pneumonia. Okay? So that's the indication. You might not know what the indication is when you're looking your drugs up, but antibiotics are indicated for abdominal infections, urinary infections, so you're, you're going to get familiar with those medications. Um, safe dose range. Just like before, that's important. You want to make sure you're not giving your patient too much or not enough. Uh, time of onset and peak action. That's very important to know since we're giving IV medications. When is this medication going to start being effective for our patient? Because we're giving it right into the IV, and um, <coughs> I don't know this off the top of my head, but Ketorolac is Tordol. It's a pain medication. If I'm giving it to my OB patient, I want to make sure that I tell them when they're going to get relief with their Ketorolac. So that's knowing the drug onset, when is it going to start working, and then how long it lasts. All right? So again, this is all information so that we can properly educate our patients. Um, common side effects. Uh, if I'm giving Ketorolac, patients don't generally have side effects, so I probably am not going to say anything. If I'm given uh, Rocephin and they have a penicillin allergy, I'm going to talk to them about possible side effects, like what? Rash. What else? What's significant? Trouble breathing. Trouble breathing. Okay, hives. So that's what we're going to, um, uh, that's why we need to know common side effects. And when you look at your drug book, because there's a lot of them listed, and you're going to learn the same ones over and over again, so don't get overwhelmed. Don't, you know, just try to gloss over it, go through all of them. The common side effects in your drug books are ones that are underlined. So um, you're probably going to see somebody with a rash with antibiotics, okay? Um, most patients with antibiotics get nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. That's one I always use, right? 
Um, the capital ones are the life-threatening ones. So of course you're going to list, and what did I say? You're going to list um, two major or life-threatening reactions, and you're going to list two or three or four common interactions so that you're starting to learn your medication. Contraindications. Um, of course, rocephin will be contraindicated in a patient that's allergic to cephalosporins, right? That's a contraindication. So um, start uh, reviewing those in your drug book. Drug interactions. I'm sure your patients in long-term care had lots of medications. Did any of you find any drug interactions when you were looking up your medications for your patients? So now that you're, you know, more aware, you're going to start looking at all their medications. Okay. Um, what else? And nursing implications, which is kind of what we've been going on about all along. Um, we've hit most of them. Uh, here's an antibiotic, Cubicin, nursing implications. Well, the most obvious one, of course, is to assess for signs and symptoms of infection, right? The next one that's in bold red letters says monitor bowel function, diarrhea, abdominal cramping. So you've been cleaning up stool all morning and you're given this antibiotic at 10, you're like, oh, it causes bloody stools. I'm supposed to report that to a healthcare professional promptly. All right? So that's why it's important to know some of the nursing implications as well. Okay. So that's the uh, medications. Um, the other thing that we're going to start talking about is compatibility. Uh, on, 